Hello, humans of the earth, and thank you for joining us on this wonderful day. My name is Heidi. And my name is Dana. And this is Fun Times with Dana and Heidi. Thank you, Heidi, for that wonderful introduction. And before we begin discussing our news stories, we are first going to begin with our beloved tweet of the week. This tweet comes from at YBakora, and it says, the scientific method be like, what if? Uh, I'm just kidding. Unless, kind of F-boy culture, but for the scientific method. You know, two different worlds, when worlds collide, you know what I mean? And it has little emojis and stuff. I can't really That really add the spice. Yes, it really adds the spice to this tweet. Love the tweet. I will say, though, I was confused in the tweet. I will say, though, I was confused in the beginning. Because I I, I was confused in the beginning. I was like, what does this mean? Like, uh, oh, oh, I'm kidding unless. But now I get it. Like, it just really shows how science is confusing. A lot of school material is actually very confusing and contradicting. Yes, and also be hypothesis, and then you actually test it. And it's just a scientific method. Send up in, like, what, three sentences? We love to see it. We love gentle Z language. And so now Heidi is going to tell us about her new story. So Heidi can go ahead and, and go. Yes, guys, I'm up. So so for today's new story, yes, guys, I'm up. So so for today's new story, we have an Arizona woman who saves a family from a fire just before their roof collapses. And I first saw this video on Twitter or TikTok. I don't really remember because this takes place on New Year's Day at 7 in the morning. So her home and that's when she knew something was wrong. Because smoke is never a good sign, guys, for our viewers and our listeners. If you see smoke, something is wrong. Stop, drop, and roll. Yes, yeah, stop, drop, and roll. You can use all of those elementary school presentations. You can finally make use of them. Use what you learn. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the smoke... Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the smoke was coming from her neighbors next door. That's what she found out when she looked out the window. And, that, and her neighbors were the Salgado's family of six. So it's a big family and a home. And she knew that she needed to check check up on them ASAP before it was too late. On their smart ring camera, because technology these days is very advanced and it's doing things I never mm-hmm. would have imagined they would do. And it was circulating all over the internet on all platforms. You name it, it's probably on there. And it showed Carolyn fervently pounding on their door to wake them up in their Avondale home. To wake them up in their Avondale home. The video was literally like, wake up. Oh my gosh, there's a fire outside. Guys, guys, wake up, wake up. And it was like five minutes of just pure pounding and screaming. And they did not wake up that easily because I believe they were probably still hung over, had party, party blood still in them from their New Year's Day celebrations. Because New Year's Day is the day after the celebrations go off, right? Or is that New mm-hmm. Year's Eve? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so probably that midnight before, they were probably, like, having fun and partying. It took a while before Carolyn could finally wake them up when she did. Finally wake them up when she did. And she was yelling at them when they just woke up. Like, they were, this was 7 in the morning, so they were in their pajamas, and Carolyn was in their robe, and no one was ready for a fire or anything like this to happen. So she was yelling at them because this was urgent, because at that point, there was fire seeping out from the sides of the house and no urgent, because at that point, there was fire seeping out from the sides of the house and no one, like, that's not good, right? That's absolutely not good. And the family didn't notice. And obviously, Carolyn wasn't yelling at them in a mean way because she was ultimately trying to save their lives. But to get out, and she was telling them, like, get out, there's a house on fire, there's smoke, there's flames you guys need to get out right away and the sagados rushed out and the true hero and savior from the heavens got out last and offered her place to stay in the video it was showing her like she was ushering them and trying to round them up and collect them because i don't think collect them because i don't think six people sleep all in the same room yeah and so she's like get out get out everyone get out get out go to my house and so yeah she offered her place to stay because it's I one great that. thing. That's yeah. one lady doing all that work. We love her. Yes, one lady fire, and which is a good thing to do. It's a great thing to do. 
But it's an added bonus that she offered her place to stay. Yeah, that's like outside. going above and beyond, you know? Like she's real like it shows that she's like a really caring person. Like she actually cares about others, like well being. So she like goes beyond just like, okay, well, I brought you a safety situation. So I think that's yeah. really cool. She puts the care in Carolyn. Am I right? Yeah, she puts the care in Carolyn. All right. A very suiting name for this wonderful lady. Yes, very suiting name. I love that. So they did an interview afterwards, and Mother Nicole Salgado said that she's glad Carolyn was so persistent in trying to wake them up because a few minutes after their roof collapsed and the firefighters were telling them that their family may not have woken up if she did not get out of the house at that moment. Oh, so and they would have died. They would have died because of all the smoke because that's really dangerous to inhale. Yeah. Ouch. That, mm-hmm, that, that, that mm-hmm. It's crazy. Imagine yeah. what would have happened. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, the Salgado family did lose everything, and I mean everything, in the fire. But a GoFundMe campaign has raised their $48,000 goal out of $50,000. Oh, so they're almost and there. They're, they're almost, almost there. there. They're yeah, almost they're almost going to reach their goal. Sure. And you know what? At least their family is complete. I think having a complete family is better than losing everything. Yeah. Than not losing everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean to call Queen Carolyn old, but <laughs> I think she's a boomer. And our generation of Gen Z, me and Dana's generation, <laughs> have given boomers and a little bit of older people a bad reputation. And this just comes to show that not all boomers <laughs> are bad. Yes, bo- we need to be kinder to uh, people mm-hmm. in the older community and yeah, give the res- and- respect uh, when deserved. They deserve respect. Respect uh, when deserved. They deserve respect. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed the sleeping schedule phenomenon that happens with boomers. I have slowly realized that boomers sleep early and they wake up early. So imagine if Carolyn didn't wake up in that morning, did not wake up at seven in the morning, did not wake up at seven in the morning. Because I like that day, I probably slept until 11. Yeah. Yeah, because that's kind of like a not a trend but just like a thing that happens so if she wasn't up that early they probably would have been a much darker ending to the story so thank you queen Car- Karen and carolyn we love to see it and we love random acts of kindness and yeah she's great and she's a hero and she's getting recognized for her contributions all over many different articles on twitter and on tiktok as heidi mentioned so yeah great so now we can actually move on to our second news. Actually, move on to our second news story. This is it's not necessarily well, kind of like the it's kind of like an update. So I don't know how many of you are already familiar with this, but there a couple of months back there was this thing called Ratatouille, the TikTok musical, and it was like an actual virtual musical that was just assembled from people on TikTok. And so it all started in August of 2020 when a 26-year-old Disney fan and school teacher named Emily Jacobson learned that a Ratatouille-themed ride at Disney World was soon scheduled to open. And so she loves Ratatouille was soon scheduled to open. And so she loves Ratatouille. She thinks it's great. And so she made a song about Remy and she posted it on TikTok. And later she actually tagged different people and got them to add instrumentals and orchestra and vocals to it. And so it was just kind of like a fun thing. Thing, you know kind of like a like a joke or something and then it ended up going viral and it ended up sparking thousands of similar videos that kind of like ratatouille themed songs and all of that ended up create creating what would become ratatouille the tiktok musical and so these are musical numbers that i just completely inspired by random people on the internet inspired by random people on the internet and it's kind of like it's not just one person. It's just whoever makes the best song on the internet, you know, out of just out of sheer creativity, just because they want to, you know. And I think that's really cool. And so eventually, two hundred thousand people became involved with me, allowed for them to have a full fledged virtual musical as a charity performance for the Actors Fund. And the Actors Yay. Fund kind of provides like uh, money for like actors who are struggling. I think it's kind of like a like a safety net kind of thing. And so 
because of they saw all of like the hype around okay these people are really for whatever reason they're really big fans of ratatouille so we should give them the rights to have that and so that disney did this is so wonderful because they had to postpone the opening of the of the ride oh really yeah unfortunately because of corona like people at least we get this out of it and yeah, so even us. though Disney is like the super powerful mega corporation, this is eventually probably going to take on, I don't know, the entire Hollywood industry. We don't know. But it was kind of them to do this for their fellow fans on TikTok. And so what I found their fellow fans on TikTok. And so what I found really, really remarkable was that this whole Ratatouille musical thing was pulled together in less than a month. Because wow. Disney was like, okay, yeah, do make the musical, but we want it ready by New Year's. I think it was New Year's Day time. And wow, so they had less than a month to put everything together to get people cast, to get them to learn the songs. There wasn't any like set or like blocking or anything, but they still had to learn everything and still had to pull together this big, even though it was virtual, it's still a big musical. And so in that big, even though it was virtual, it's still a big musical. And so in that performance, they ended up raising more than $1 million dollars and yeah, I think that's a really great outcome, you know. It shows the power of the interwebs. We love the internet. So and what like format did it take up? Was it like individual people in their homes on a Zoom or was it like performance that they just videotaped? No, 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 no. I think it was like everyone it, 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 it sorry, I keep stuttering. I think everyone was at home and they made it like vertical, like the way you would like uh record a TikTok. Like all of the videos were vertical. And then I think they just kind of like edited them together. Like the videos oh. together. So, you know, edited them together, like the videos together. So, you know, completely safe. And yeah, you know, we love creativity during the quarantine. And fun fact, this actually got me like strangely excited. And I kind of go on to actually see the entire musical now. Uh, Titus Burgess, if if you guys in the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. And I think he's also on Broadway. I think that he's in some sort of like Disney musical i think so or maybe he was in something else but i think he's on broadway in something and he plays remy he's a star of the virtual show and so remind we love me that. Burgess. star of the virtual show and so remind we love me that. burgess is because i watched a few episodes of kimmy schmidt and i don't really remember who's actor and like who played what i just remember like their faces so how does he look like uh he's he has like he's like he's black and he has he's bald oh i know who and he's like big and he's i love like, him he's yes and we yes. love him he's amazing he has an amazing voice he literally has an amazing voice like i don't know if y'all have heard the man sing but the man sure sings he has vocals for days and so yeah i love him and i stand him as remy and so yeah i love him and i stand him as remy and they also fun fact number two they also ended up having two performances because of its success they had one i think it was on new year's day and then they had another one later in january and so uh, i'm sure there's a recording out there somewhere they can get somehow some way musical assembled in less than one month on tiktok who would believe it how remarkable we love it i love this and i will probably watch this afterwards yeah there's a lot of like I never realized how many people loved Ratatouille until yeah. very recently. Like, okay, until yeah. very recently. Like, okay, I thought it was a cool movie, but there's people out there that like love Ratatouille. Yeah, there like, are I've seen like fans. Yeah, there's hardcore not just hardcore Disney fans, but like specifically just for Ratatouille, Ratatouille for fans. Yeah. Like I remember there was like I saw this YouTube video it came up in my recommend an hour and a half film analysis of ratatouille and so i saw it and i thought like okay this is cool you know the little rat he's a chef and it's cute but there's people that are really really into us and go off you know they if they love it they're doing what they love and they actually ended up making something very crazy so props to all of these people the talent the talent the persistence even during a pandemic they said you know what let's just make a musical let's just do it we love it 
And so now moving on to our next segment, there were many new species discovered, really very interesting. And so the first one is a spider in Iran. And so it's part of the velvet spider family. And it's named after Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of Lou Reed, which is Batman's famous nemesis in the 2019 production. And so it has, it's a, it looks really scary. It has, it's a, it looks really scary to me. It's called a Lurita Phoenixy. So basically taking like the character name and Phoenix and just kind of making it one scientific name. And so Lurita Phoenixy, it looks, it, it looks pretty freaky. Like, and what do you mean by velvet spider? Probably like the texture. Ew, like, ew, 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 yeah. Ew. And so oh. it has a quote, quote, um, unquote, frightening. My body. Yes. Frightening red splotch on the thorax. And it has like white banded black legs. So that's not something you want to find when you're taking out the trash or something. Kind of scary. And so, kind of scary. And so it's one, it's the first of its species to be found outside of the Mediterranean. And while it does indeed look very scary, I don't know if y'all want to look it up. Lurita, L-O-U-R-E-E-C-I-A. And then Phoenix, just the word Phoenix with an I at the end. And so it looks pretty, but it's only eight millimeters long. So it's really not that big. Like in a close-up picture, you'd probably be like, whoa, that's terrifying, but it's really not that big compared to like other spiders that we know that exist. And so, and actually it, it displays rather charming behavior such as communal nest, such as communal nest building. So it's working with others to build its little nest. And it also carries for other spiders young. Joaquin Phoenix, the spider, the babysitter. We love it. And so a little scary, but how much is eight millimeters? It can't be that much. Right? It's like, how wait, how many millimeters that much? Right? It's like how wait, how many millimeters is a centimeter? Oh, okay, I think I found it. Okay, it's I think it's like only like three and a half centimeters. It's not that big. Only. Only. Well, there's bigger spiders. There's spiders that are like, I don't know, like five inches long or four inches long. Spiders are my least favorite animal. I hate spiders. Ooh. Yeah, it's almost no eight millimeters isn't even a uh, entire centimeter. I just looked it up. It's not even one centimeter. It's like zero point eight centimeters. So you'll be fine. Oh, not so bad. It has to be insanely yeah. tiny, unless it's like some sort of like baby, and then it'll grow to be like this mutant spider thing. But is this um venomous? I don't think so. I, don't think so. I mean. It, it seems to be vibing, and even then, like I'm sure, it's really it's tiny. The venom though, so wouldn't really power. do anything. It probably, st- probably stings, but it probably won't. I don't think it'll do anything. But yeah, and so we'll wait and see, Dana. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see until I go to Iran, and then it stings me, and then I die from the Joaquin Phoenix spider. Ouch. So last year, during a worldwide pandemic, a scientist found what is the largest and the longest animal ever recorded in deep sea canyons near Ningalu. And so the longest animal ever recorded is called a siphonophore. And basically what it is, it's kind of like, it's like a sea creature and it's coiled up like a rope and it looks kind of like a jellyfish rather than a, rather than a worm. But actually, what it is, it's a colonial organism made of smaller parts called zooids. And kind of like, uh, you know how different people would operate like a submarine or something? Like they each have yeah. their past. Well, each zooid inside this organism has a specific function. So like one of them manages like a propulsion and like controlling body movement. And the other one could be a gas gastric functions like inside and so all of these zooids have a specific function within this organism and so yeah two two kind of freaky things in a really freaky year that's weird so really freaky year that's weird so can zooids live on their own no i think they're just i think they're just components i'm not sure i see like living components yeah that's I think they're just, it's creepy yeah it's an animal it's like an animal made of tiny animals it's like this reminds me of like a cockroach because they still live. I did not know that. I just like if yeah. I see a cockroach, I just like smash it, smash it with like my sandal. 
and then it'll yeah like die. cockroaches can live without some of their body parts for a long time oh, it's oh like how lizards like if you like yeah. chop off a lizard's tail it'll grow they back, grow back. Conophores are long roped or long rope shaped animals that are relatives of corals and jellyfish. So that's really interesting because jellyfish, I don't think they have hearts or brains, right? They're just like kind of like floating thingies, but they're still alive, which is really strange. And yeah, it's a siphonophore larvae, bud off noids, which remain attached to a stem that elongates. And so, yeah, they're basically made up of like these little tiny living things kind of like i guess how we're made of cells i mean it's not really comparable to anything i'm looking at a picture right now it looks like a plant it's its own unique species yeah it looks like a plant its own unique species yeah it looks like a plant it doesn't even look alive siphonophore google it everyone it looks looks kind of like it's just like tubes connected by like a stick and then like feathery looking things in the bottom and that's a living thing the more you know the more you grow so yes, that's all for my science the talk. More you- so yes, that's all for my science the talk. The more you segment. know, the more you grow. I love that. Yes. So now uh, Heidi can go ahead and review uh, one day at a time for our lovely audience. Yes. So today's review is on a TV show. Showed TV show that I'd like to ask you, Dana. Have you watched this TV show before? I have not seen this TV show before. You I'm are not missing familiar out. with it. Everyone who has not watched One Day at a Time is missing out. So this all started when I had a bad case of cabin fever because of corona. We don't want to be going out. No one should be going out at the moment. Corona, we don't want to be going out. No one should be going out at the moment unless they need to. And I needed something to do that was not homework because my life consisted of homework, eat, breathe, read, sleep. And I would just do that every single day. So I needed something that I could do to relax for what didn't take much effort out of me. So again, I went, on to, I went on to TikTok and a video showed a snippet of a Netflix original TV show that I later learned to be one day at a time. And it really snatched my attention. It showed a flamboyant Cuban grandmother at her citizenship test, a flamboyant Cuban grandmother at her citizenship test, Pronouncing basic English sentences, such as The fox is on the beach, but you can hardly tell what that was what she was trying to say. And forthwith, I borrowed my friend's Netflix account and finished all four seasons within weeks. Four to three seasons, first three seasons um, consisted of 13 episodes that were each 30 minutes long, which is crazy, crazy. So one day at a time, ODAT, I like to shorten it because one day at a time is a lot to say when you're constantly saying it and recommending it and recommending it to your friends. Mm-hmm. And I will be giving and recommending it and recommending it to your friends. Mm-hmm. And I will be giving you guys some backstory about this little plot and the, you know, just so you can get familiar with this wonderful TV show. It is a comedy drama sitcom that follows a newly single Cuban mother with her mom and two kids and their apartment landlord, Schneider, and mother's. The TV show reboot, because this TV show, like this Netflix original, was actually a reboot of like an old 1975, I think, like one day at a time. So this is like a more modernized version. So this is not new, technically not new. And it provides a modern take of what life's like during good and bad times and how it's a modern take of what life's like during good and bad times and how family can make the tears, laughs, gains and losses worth it. And... I know some people like like oldie movies and like old time, but for some reason, they don't just con- they don't connect with me as well because I don't understand like their time period. You know, they're in your own time period, right, Dana? Yeah, I definitely agree. My friend wanted me to watch Bonnie and Clyde, and I was just watching it right now. Like literally, like I was watching it before we recorded this episode, and like it was like the sixties. I think it was the sixties or seventies version. I think it was made in the sixties. Yeah and it's it was the 70s version i think it was made in the 60s yeah and it's it, it's still like in color and everything but like it, the culture is just very different and mm-hmm. like the, the lingo that they use is very different and so i personally prefer things that are made in the More now modern. in the present just because 
not or anything like you know sometimes when like you know if you're watching like a 2001 reality tv show and they have like flip phones and stuff like it's gonna feel dated you know what i mean it feels weird yeah it yeah feels, it feels like, out weird. of place yeah so yeah that's why i prefer watching things as heidi does and that take place not take place in the present but heidi does and that take place not take place in the present but uh were released recently there we go yeah so Odat quickly became my comfort food friend and guilty pleasure in the time of the pandemic. And the normal amount of dopamine released what during one year of my lifetime became the amount released during each. And unfortunately, this show was unjustly canceled twice. And I'm very angry about that because they deserve infinite seasons, literal infinite seasons. And the coronavirus contributed to their second cancellation and because things have been canceled so many times it's really difficult to run any type of many times it's really difficult to run any type of like theatrical or entertainment like with dana's um disney performance that had to be virtual it's very difficult so they it, like unfortunately just canceled it and but 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 if the show had not been canceled i would not have needed it's, one, it's 42 episodes tackle a myriad of life problems such as drinking, finance, racism, mental health, LGBT rights, in an audience peeling way. And I learned so much more from this show than I do in school. Period. <laughs> Period. Period. Okay. Like, I will drop out of- Okay. Like, I will drop out of school if I had to do- devote my life to this show. I will drop out. Just watching it. Not even participating in it. Just watching the show for the rest of your life. That's enough. <laughs> Heidi, Heidi's life is over. This is all that she needs. Especially because they do this show in front of a, li- a live audience. So there are not any laugh tracks or acts being overlaid on top of this show. It's purely the audience laughing their heads off. I love that. It's like it's not like fake. It's not like the fake. Because you know like when when you were little and you would watch like Disney Channel like TV yeah, shows. And, like, and they would always use like the same <laughs> clip of people laughing. It would be like like a... Um, it would be like like a very high laughter and then kind of like a low laughter and then like the medium laughter. Yeah. And then and they, they would have like the gas, noise. like the and like the cheering sound effect, you know, like it, you can already you already know what they sound like. But this is like actual it's a live audience. So it's like genuine. Yeah. Th- these are real reactions. Yeah. Like SNL kind of. Mm-hmm. And a healthy human should exercise. Right, Dana? Mm-hmm. Yes, I agree. For at least an hour a day, according to Fitness Gram or something stupid like that. Actually, <laughs> I should not say stupid. Healthy like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Odad for also provides a way to exercise on the ca- exercise on the couch. I laughed and cackled until I felt visceral pain, the same pain I would feel if I did ten- one hundred sit ups. And you know that like pain that you feel when you laugh really hard. It's yeah, like yeah. I think your stomach hurts. Exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So not only was I able to exercise abdominal muscles, I was also able to exercise my heart. Whenever I would finish an episode, I would feel a surge of happy energy that made me want to run a marathon. Oh, that's good then. It's like a serotonin-inducing show. Yeah, it was a a serotonin shot for sure. (laughs) Yes, your daily dose of serotonin comes from from this show one day at a time. Yes. Any extra thoughts before I close my... My little, like, synopsis of this beautiful, beautiful show. I don't have any extra thoughts. This sounds... Because uh, I don't... Okay, this is, like, a like a disclaimer for everyone. Heidi's not very, like, a movie person. No, and I don't, like... Like, I know that you watch some TV shows, but I don't think you watch many TV shows. Or at least not, no, like, excessively many. Like, I don't all, think you're a TV actually. person. So, like, the fact that this is, like... S- not stimulating because that's a weird word to a weird way to put it arousing. but like no 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 put it arousing. but like no 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 not arousing you <laughs> but like like the way the fact that you're so excited over this and you're like you're so enthusiastic there we go you're so enthusiastic over this tv show it has me really intrigued you know i mm-hmm. kind of want to kind of want to attend Yes, Dana's right. I'm definitely not one to be watching TV shows and movies. In fact, this TV show is the second TV show on, like, Netflix that I've ever watched in my life. Wait, it's, like, your second show? Like, not even, like, Stranger Things? 
No, I only watched Jane the Virgin, and then I. Well, I love that for you. You know, you found your second TV show that you like. You know, so everyone good. goes at their own pace. But yes, yes, I love that. And the importance of this show is that it highlights the importance of family, whether whether blood related or not, above all else. All else. So no amount of money and material goods can replace the amount of joy and wholeness you feel around the people you love. The show and its theme song, This Is It, propounds a valuable concept. Take life one day at a time. Oh, that's cute. I like it's that. It's so good, Dana. You better watch this. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll watch it later. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I'm still on the hunt to find a way to watch 90 Day Fiance without having to illegally stream it. So <laughs> one day, Dana, you should, one day. You should. Do you have Hulu? I think it's on Hulu. No, but I might just use like a disposable email or something like that. I saw on TikTok. Yeah. You can... Like a disposable email or something like that. I saw on TikTok. Yeah, you can do that. There's also Discovery Plus, but like I don't think anyone's going to like use that. Because there's this thing where it's like, uh, it's Discovery Plus. Like, you know how there's like all these streaming services because cable is going out of business. Yeah, so... I've never had cable like since, okay. never had cable like since 20. 20- 15 probably yeah and so there's this thing called discovery plus and you can basically stream like all of like the regular cable channels but just like binge watch all of them but i don't know i don't think unless you're like a 90 day fiance super fan because according this is ads for discovery plus it'll be like um binge watch all of the 90 day fiance universe because they have a universe of universe com- comparable to like the marvel cinematic universe or the dc comics universe or the harry potter Ooh. universe or the star wars universe Ooh. right next to them is the 90 day fiance right next to them is the 90 day fiance universe and so yeah i mean you can get that but like i don't like i wouldn't pay to watch like things that are normally on cable it's like tlc and then i think it's like the food network and like these other like nothing else is on or something except for 90 day fiance we love 90 day fiance but i don't know i don't know if anyone actually pays that but if you are really devoted you're saying okay i want to watch 90 day fiance like a full season or whatever it should probably be on there it's usually on cable too like if you have like a sling or something like a sling or something similar to that effect where i can watch like some cable channels it should be on there too i see is 90 day fiance a tv show where you have to watch it in order or can you like watch it out of order because that's important. Uh, okay so Maybe every season okay so basically the way 90 day fiance works is that every see couples so you need to watch them in order but like just the season by itself in order oh i see so okay you, need, you don't need to watch it like from all the way to the, from the beginning to end like you don't need to do that it's just like it's like by season it's like little chunks i see thank you for letting me know yes and for today's motivational thank you for letting me know yes and for today's motivational quote to finish off this wonderful entertainment filled episode mm-hmm. this quote is by Banksy, and this is the anonymous artist i believe and he says, or she said, because I don't really know the gender of this anonymous person. I think it's a dude. I think Banksy's a dude. So this dude said, if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. Yes. Boom. Boom. Mic drop. Period. I think, oh, I just looked it up. Banksy's real name, people think, is Robin Gunningham, who is wow. a dude. So we may never know. So we may never know <laughs> let me see <laughs> you like you just hear like the keyboard clack i know yeah, yeah i think it's a dude i think it's a guy okay well thank you banksy for that wonderful piece of advice and thank you all for listening to our podcast make sure to follow us on instagram and much much more and you can also visit our website linked in the description to read more about today's news stories and so I think that is it for now. So thank you all very much for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you.